Here we're going to be taking a look at how to improve your pace in Gran Turismo 7. Today I'm going to be going through about 6 tips, I might do more in the future if this video does well, but let's get into it. The first thing that I'm going to be talking about in this video is braking references. Braking references can be objects around the track or even parts of the track itself to help with your braking points. For example, you could be using a lamppost or maybe a specific tree or a part of the track that you, when you reach that point you know when to brake. And with braking references you don't always have to brake right alongside it. As long as you're braking in proximity to that braking reference in the same spot every time, that will massively help with your consistency. And with a solid braking reference, you won't be braking randomly into the turn every time. Without a solid braking reference, you'll likely be missing your braking points and overshooting the corners, therefore costing you tons of time. I actually recently made a video on my YouTube channel about braking references and learning new tracks in general. If you want to see that, the video is just up there. And just another note with references, it doesn't only have to be for braking, it could be a point on the wall where you begin to turn in and you make the apex every time. Things like that will help you be super consistent and ultimately improve your pace as well. Secondly, I would like to talk about throttle control because in Gran Turismo 7 it seems like throttle control is your best friend. Even with traction control on a fairly low level, or on any level for that matter, you still need to be controlling your throttle to get the most out of your lap times. This is super important here in Gran Turismo 7 because if you just hammer the throttle, especially with no traction control, you're just going to spin out the corner every single time. And if you're using traction control and you just hammer the throttle, either you're still going to spin, or the traction control is going to interfere so much that it's going to give you a really poor exit because it's going to cut all the power from your engine trying to stop you from spinning around. Now with controlling your throttle, you only really want to get to 100% throttle when you're in a straight line or very close to it. If you're turning too much or you're on a really tight turn and still coming out of the turn while turning and you just nail the throttle, that's when you're likely going to either oversteer like mad and spin or the traction control is going to hurt your exit. So when you're in mid-turn, coming out of the turn and you're beginning to accelerate, be very gentle on the throttle. Only about 20% to start with and gradually build that up and when you get close to, closer to a straight line, that's when you can get the throttle down harder. And experiment with this, go to a time trial session, just you and the track, and practice the corners and coming out of them and how much throttle you can put down before you start oversteering or hitting the traction control. With an ideal exit, you should smoothly apply the throttle, there should be no oversteer where you're correcting the wheel too much, and you shouldn't really get any traction control engagement at all. And this leads me to my next point, and that would be traction control itself. In Gran Turismo 7, it is extremely difficult to drive without traction control. Almost every rear wheel drive car in Gran Turismo without traction control will see you spinning sideways if you just hammer the throttle out of corners. So if you're going to drive without traction control, you've got to have really strong throttle control. And in some cases, running with traction control number one is actually faster than I've found. But not always. I actually ran through a few tests at Tsukuba here with two GT3 cars, one being the Mazda and one being the Audi R8. Now what I found with the Mazda is that I can actually go a little bit quicker if I'm very gentle with my throttle inputs with traction control off. I went a bit faster, I struggled to beat the time or even get close to it with traction control on. It took me a very good lap to get in with a couple tenths with traction control on. However, if traction control is off with the Mazda, if I hammer the throttle too hard and I'm still turning too much, I'm gonna just spin and that happens in pretty much all the corners. Now with the Audi R8, it was a little bit of a different story. I found myself going a bit quicker with traction control on. If I got a really nice lap together, I could maybe go a few tenths, a couple tenths quicker than I did with traction control off. I found it extremely difficult to control that Audi R8 with it off, but I could do it, and even when I did a really good lap with it, I didn't go as fast as I did with the traction control on. Maybe I could go faster with it off if I really got a nice lap together. But that just shows how difficult it is and if you're really going to be doing long races it might just be worth racing with traction control on number one but if you can control it like with the mazda i found it a little bit easier i could go faster with it off and then after these two i drove with the road car the 370z just to see what it was like with traction control off and on similar to the mazda i found myself going a little bit quicker with the traction control off and i think it's like that with most of the road cars obviously i haven't tried them all and i'm not going to because there's so many of them so my two suggestions to you is if you can't control the car with traction control off no matter how hard you try just run the traction control on it's not going to harm you too much and you'll end up being faster that way and my second suggestion to you is that if you do have really good throttle control experiment with the cars that you're driving because some might be quicker with it off 
but if they're not quicker with it off then just keep the traction control on of course but that's just something to try it might help you get a little bit more pace out of the car and pretty much most of the time if not all of the time if you're using traction control run it on number one because two three four and five are all just going to make you slower however if you're still struggling to drive the car on traction control number one then of course take it another step maybe two or three and my next tip for you guys is trail braking and some of you may already know about this some of you may not but if you'd like a bit more of an in-depth look about why trail braking is so good then check out this video I did a little while ago. I explain about how to make the most of the available grip in your tires and trail braking is a big part of that. Basically if you're hard on the brakes into a braking zone and you're turning while hard on the brakes your car's not really going to turn. Your car's only really going to turn when you lift off the brake pedal and give your tires a little bit more available grip to provide laterally so you can turn. Here's a quick example, if you look at my brake trace, initially I'm hard into the turn and as I begin to turn I lift off the brake pedal and then once I'm about mid turn I've still got about 10% of the brake pedal applied because a little bit of brake is good in the middle of a corner because it pushes the weight towards the front of the car, it puts more weight on the front tyres therefore giving you a little bit more front grip. And if you're mid corner and you've got no brake on at all, then you're not getting that extra front grip that you could be with a little bit more trail braking. My next tip now is about taking the shortest lines possible while maintaining necessary speed. To go as quick as you possibly can around a circuit, you want to make your line as short as possible. So you want to be making the most of the track limits going as tight over the apexes as you can while going fast. When going through turns, you don't want to be sitting in the middle of the track or going very wide around the outside of the track because then you're costing yourself plenty of time where you could be cutting right towards the apex. The apex is the part of the turn where you should be closest to the inside of the turn before going out again on the exit of the corner. And you want to be linking up your apexes right throughout the lap to make the most of your lap. If you're missing apexes and going wide, then you've immediately cost yourself some lap time and that you should be working on. And don't think you can relax too much on the flat out turns as well, because we'll take a look here at the last turn of Deep Forest. Very fast flat out turn, but if you stay out wide like this, you're going to cost yourself time. Stick the car right along the inside line, right through the apex out the final corner. You're going to gain yourself just that little bit more time. But just keep that in mind, even when you're going fast through flat out windy corners, just keep that line as short as you can possibly make it and you'll gain just a little bit more out of your lap. Just another little tip, make sure you're using the most of slipstream so when you're in the straights, drive right behind another car because that car in front of you is pushing away all that air in front of them which allows you to get behind them. You don't have to deal with all that air in front of you so you're going a little bit faster. It's kind of sucking you up behind them, helping you gain that extra speed down the straights and once you're right behind them you can pull out and overtake them. And if you are slipstreaming somebody and you're in cockpit view, make sure you're driving with your head directly behind their head if you're both on the same side of the car. And if your view and the cockpit's aligned with the center of the car in front of you, then you're not going to be making the most of your slipstream effect because half of your car is still sticking out de dealing with the draggy air. And this effect might hurt you in the corners because if your car has a lot of downforce and you're behind another car going through a fast turn, you're going to understeer and go wider than them and you're not going to have as much grip because you're not going to have that air pushing your car down because you're not getting the downforce. So my suggestion is that if you're in really high downforce cars, maybe enter a corner a little wider than the car in front of you so you've got that air pushing down on the front of your car. Just experiment a little bit there. I haven't tried too much with Gran Turismo 7 yet and its dirty air effects, but if that becomes an issue to you, experiment with your lines and make sure you're getting that extra downforce. Now for the next tip. Don't turn too early. So when you're entering a braking zone and you're approaching the turn, don't apex the turn too early. Don't go too close to the inside of the turn too quickly. You want to stay out wide initially and carry your speed around the turn, make a more mid to late apex maybe, depending on the turn, and then carry your speed out of the turn. Because if you're entering the turn too early, and you're having to slow down a little more, more to tuck yourself around the turn, obviously you're not gonna be going as fast as you could be carry your speed around through the apex and out. And that leads me to my last tip here and that is carrying your speed through turns and using all of the track that's available. So if we take a 90 degree turn for example, on entry we want to be right towards the outside of the track, right up along the edge and then as we enter the corner we want to break, trail break using all the te techniques that we've learned, carry our speed right through the apex as much as we can and accelerate as early as we are actually able to do and on the exit of the turn we want to end up right by the outside of the track again on the exit curb or, or on the exit line if there's no curb on the exit and that way we know we're getting the most out of our turn 
and if you've carried your speed through the turn the car should naturally move out towards the outside of the circuit on the exit. If you haven't carried enough speed through a turn, on exit the car should have plenty of grip to make it through not even close to the outside of the track. To practice this on every corner that you do, you want to be making the most of the available track. Outside, inside, outside. Not outside apex and then middle of the track. Then you're not carrying all the speed through the turn. Same thing with entry. You, want to, you don't want to be in the middle of the track. You want to be to the outside of the track. It does depend on the type of turn, but if you're online, I would suggest look at the faster guys and see what kind of lines they're taking. Or maybe even look up people doing fast laps online at that specific track and kind of learn what lines they're doing. But in some time, you should be able to learn it naturally what kind of lines you need to take to make the most of the available track. So these were just some tips that I thought up of. I might do some more later on, like I said, depending on how well this video does. I hope it might have helped some of you that are maybe new to Gran Turismo or new to racing games in general or sim racing. Thank you all for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe you guys have some extra tips as well that you'd like to share specifically related to Gran Turismo because I know GT is a little bit different to other sims. But for the most part, it's actually a decent sim game. You still have to use good driving techniques to go fast. Thanks again and see you next time.